I'm beautiful, lovely gamers. My name is Jonal. Actually, today I'm Coach Jonal. Uh, I've been doing this YouTube coaching series, redoing it a little bit more to the way that I do my private coaching. Um, for those who don't know, I do coach, you know, quote unquote professionally. I do make actually a decent amount of money. I have a quite the a good amount of customers when it comes to you know helping both you know high ranking team, low ranking team, but also very high ranking players and also down with the low ranking players. Help it be very improved and all that stuff. That is, of course, a service that I take a payment for. If anyone is some for someone interested, you guys can hit me up either on the e and my email, which you guys can find probably, or you can just join the Discord community. Link to that down in the description where you can then contact me about private coaching or tweet at me on Twitter, also linked down in the description. But right now, we're doing it here on YouTube. Um, normally there will be a guy, the guy that I coach will be talking to me. That is of course not the case, but if you're interested in posting your gameplay and hopefully maybe getting that coach in a future video, then you can go on to our Discord server. There's an own channel for coaching here. You can submit your gameplay. Remember just that it needs to be okay quality or good quality, 720p or better on the screen. And it also needs to have good audio. Remember that I have to put this up on YouTube all over again. So if it's bad quality, I'm not even going to be close to get to coaching it. And yes, it has to be a ranked game, but yes, it can be anything. It can be on consoles or on PC. Any hero doesn't matter. Just remember, I'm not going to pick the same heroes over and over and over again in the straight line. So if there's 18 Genji suggestions and one Lucio, for example, or one Reinhardt, I'm going to take the Reinhardt and Lucio before I spam you guys with 18 Genji coaches. Besides that, today we're taking a look at a Grand Master Sinyata. We're going to take a look at the defensive part here on Junkertown. And overall, we have two very big flaws that we will see through this video. The first one is, you know, in general aim and to a certain extent lack of mechanical. A little bit slow on the marking, a little bit slow on, you know, getting some of those healing knobs onto people. But especially what we will be focusing on here is the positioning of the GM player. I know that this is actually a... Uh, a tank main, so this is actually a tank main playing Sindyata. This guy's placed for a team that I'm coaching currently. So, besides that, guys, let's just begin right here. Now, note that the team composition that is gonna come up uh, from this side of the team is gonna be Sindyata with an Ana, a Tracer, a Hog, a Widow, and a Reinhardt. That is gonna be the defensive team composition. So, a kind of death ball ish thingy going on there with a little bit of a Widowmaker, probably counter Widowing, creates some good space and Tracer harassing the backline. Two pretty good long range healers here. So that's very important to note that the fact that there is a shield, but the shield is very movable all the time. You also have this hog, which while he doesn't at least create, you know, the, the, the immediate protection of shielding or anything in that matter, he does create the threat that if you're pushing beyond this point, I can hook you, I can kill you, I can punish your overextension. So if anyone really wants to engage here, they have to engage us as a multiple unit. So let's begin off just right here. Now this is just a very, very small thing, especially when you have stuff like Reinhardt and, you know, there's normally some time here. You can always get off a volley towards spawn, see if you can get some damage in. It's very nice to get your, just your trance build, that's just like a very small thing, of course. And yes, I muted the audio, uh, there's not really that much I'm focusing on when it comes to this, uh, when it comes towards the audio parts. Now that is actually just fine, right? This positioning where he was holding here towards the stairs is very common positioning. You're staying around your team, fine, it's hard to, to get to. And as you can see, it's also very hard for them to dive straight onto them. Dive comp, very good for dealing with certain people like Sen right here. As you can see, of course, he's getting pressured by the, the Tracer. What you want immediately here, especially when you, you know, you're Sinjata, you're not charging a right click. You want to, you know, if you fire the first shot because you were doing a, a rotation, that's fine. But immediately there should be a mark in between the shots so that when you actually hit, the 30% defense uh, decrease has been taken effect. Now, here he's going to do the, you know, this is fine. This is fine positioning here because you're holding this crate. There's a Widowmaker. I understand that, you know, that can be very scary. On top of that, you know, you can see our his Ryan pushing up here. This, however, is very weird positioning. 
the Reinhardt is pushing up. There's no shield here, and there's still hit scans on high ground. There's actually a Sinjara and a soldier ready to really shoot down this range. By him pushing up here, it's actually very risky for, for exactly like what? You're not really gaining that much. And as you can see here, it also makes you very diveable. On top of that, there can come a tracer from our left side here. So through this house where the mega is, it's a very you know common tracer route to flank all around you know this left side here. So that is, of course, an issue. Now, you're going to back off here and, and try to keep yourself here in line of sight. This is still, you know, kind of risky positioning. It's very easy for the Widow to land headshots. It's very easy for Winston to dive. You're very easy for Tracer to dive. This is very, you know, you know, you applying pressure compared to, uh, you know, you being safe. It's kind of, you know, the trade-off of risking your death for pressure here. Um, of course, here, of course, your team should fall back, which they eventually will finally do. And I just need to keep an eye on my, you know, my general time bars here. Now, this is actually pretty good, but as you've seen here, this is where this positioning here comes. Especially, you know, when your team were holding, you know, right around up here, this is fine, right? You don't really, especially when they're holding all the way up here, you know, they're not really budging and you kind of need to mark stuff for them. Even though this is risky, you can, of course, fall even further back. You can. You can there's uh, cover way further back, so you can actually fall further back here, trying to create maximum space here, also telling your team, of course, that, you know, we need to back off because we lost this high ground session. So telling your team, you know, okay, we need to back off, we can't really contest this. And also remember that you can rely very much on your honor doing huge parts of this healing. So then when we come to here and the team is, you know, backing off, this allows room for the dive comp to come in. And this is where you should have been hauled ass and just gotten the fuck out. Like, you need to create huge space here in between you and the divers so that the divers need to burn a lot of resources to get to you. Of course, you can see that that doesn't happen. As I said, the Tracer will do, do this left side flank here. That's very common. And the Winston will do the same. By the Winston doing this, of course, he, he does that the Hog, the Tracer, the Ana, the Winston is not going to poke him before he initializes dive. So he's, he's diving here with huge HP pulls, with his bubble up and everything, getting really nice in there. Now, he goes in alone, and that's what gets this guy killed, besides him and the Tracer, and you are getting pocketed by the Ana, which is very lucky. Now, now you, of course, you want to do a similar thing. As you can see where the Ana was positioned right over here. Let me see if I can get that paused here, right? It's, he's far here on the right side, he's behind the car, doing that it's very hard for her to get dive. They have to run through main, where your hog is standing compared to you, who is standing kind of really in the opening, allowing your door to the very far left here of the screen to be, you know, the, the open dive target. So that's, of course, one big issue. Now you want to do the exact opposite thing of what happened now. You want to create space here. You don't want to stay this close to your Reinhardt. You don't have something to create room so the dive comp is actually let in. And you want to make sure that, that never happens again. So create huge space in between you and the Rhine is, is very important here. Something in the in the range of this. This is actually incredibly good position. You can even go a little bit further back than this and still get a huge overview because that's also what we want with Senyata. We want these huge overviews so that we you know we can get at least a warning in that you know okay the tracer's coming, okay the winds are coming, so you can get the maximized of the poking, the marking, get the maximum damage, or at least they have to you know really burn resources to get to you while they're really also risking their own life to get to you. So it's the tracer here, right? She has to burn a lot of abilities to get to you, but you could hold even further back than that. I always have to just keep an eye on the timestamps since I coached this ages ago and now I'm just like going over it. Now this is incredibly bad position. Now we can all see that, right? We had this this actually this really good position here when the tracer died right here right we're holding these crates areas you know we are we have huge amount of space we have huge amount of cover that we can go behind there's even a health pack over here where we can use to stay sustained right and there's huge room even though your tanks are falling back it's fine when your tanks are falling back you can fall even further back okay you're getting really close strength and 94 percent you really want that ultimate up here if you're gonna you know try to full hold that's something that you want but what you do here is you're pushing far up yes the tracer is dead. Yes, the enemy team to a certain extent have to fall back, but you always you you already have trans. Before this next team fight will go in, you will have trans. So you pushing up here is risking you know the pick of the Sinjara for nothing. You're not really gaining anything, okay? Except that you know the chance of you sniping someone across the map. 
no offense, but with your with this aim, that's a very high expectation. And even besides that, you know, it's still a high expectation, even for a really good Senyata player to get a really long sniper compared to the fact that they have, an, you know, divers and a Senyata themselves and a soldier and a Widowmaker that can really punish you hard. And this is, you know, a big, big issue. Now, luckily, your Widow, your Tracer is actually creating so much room that's very hard, but then you get punished like this. And this is because, again, you ruined your position. If the if the if the enemy team hadn't staggered here, then this would have been the perfect opportunity for the enemy team to push. Your DPS is carrying hard and popping off, and your tanks are popping off. But if that hasn't been the case, then this could have been a very easy loss uh, because that first pick there on the Sinyala is huge, and that was your transcend just going out. So right now, essentially, you are winning due to DPS carry, and of course your your, your hog and stuff like that carrying. You're doing the very same thing here, right? Staying very close to this. You can't really see when anyone is coming. So you don't know if someone is coming here. And it's very easy for they to outmaneuver you. So you don't want to hold this shitty position here. You want to, you know, create more space here. Now, then you're doing, you know, some pretty good poking. Your honor's under trouble. You actually get honor. Very nice help for that. Um... In general, pretty decent play. Of course, your team left your Reinhardt. That's always a mistake. That's really not your problem, though. Now, you're falling back here. Of course, you're getting pushed. You're trying to fall back. This is very much, you know, doable as long as you guys don't stagger. So here you are doing, you know, actually really good work. Giving the space that you need. This is, of course, incredibly risky. You know, you decide to gang onto the Winston. <laughs> the Tracer is still alive. They can come in here and kill you. This is risky. This is really gambling on the fact that, okay, we... We, we kill this Winston fast, you know, me and the Tracer, we get this Winston out, we don't die to some random shit that just comes from the enemy team, the soldier rushes us, or uh, their, their, their uh, Tracer gets in on a backline or something like that, the soldier is dead now to think about us, that was a stupid statement, but that the Tracer at least get on you, you're really risking that on this, so getting the pick will be huge for a retake, however, dying here is is something that's riskable. You have the transcendence, so of course you can use transcendence to really push through and get on the point with your, your team. But you get the Winston, so this is, you know, nothing fine. It's just a very risky positioning mistake. Now, do you get a huge lag spike here? This is not my screen. This is actually his computer getting a lag spike or the video getting a lag spike. Um, but yeah, essentially you're transing on point. You're trying to keep people alive. Um, actually, a pretty good trance, to be honest. This is really all about, you know, you guys... You know, wanting to commit here and doing a lot of work. And this, that's exactly what you're doing. As I said, your your DPSs, your tanks, all that stuff, they are really outskilling the enemy team. You guys can out-duel the enemy team, which is really what brings you guys victory here. That you definitely have the, the better side of DPSs and stuff like that. And that's actually, you know, good standard mechanical skill. You bait out the flag, charge the right flag while he was firing it and then tried to volley him. Really good stuff. Now, this is also, you know, as I talked about, you know, again, you want to be this threat. Same with soldier play styles and stuff like that. Then when you know that you have the point that there's no real reason you're getting close to a new transcendent, you don't want anyone to be allowed to get on the point and just fight on the point. You want to drag people away from the point, so you want to create space from between you and the point. You already have tanks and everything to claim this. So you want to create a huge space where you can have a good overview, meaning you want to go further back, uh, probably up the, to you know the halfway high ground that's behind you as of now, right? And you want to take that so that you can you know mark everyone that rushes this point so you can build your transcendence um, and so that you're not a target because... Let's just say that this is a, a basic positioning. Now, your team is, has won this. This is a one fight. Uh, the map has actually won this side. But let's say that, for example, um, the, the enemy team had the Tracer and the Winston left. You being on this payload makes you incredibly diveable. They would leap and just kill you. And that's no transcendence for your team. And for their on, as long as they can stall along, you, you know, they don't have... You, your team can't mark them. Your team can't discord of them. So that gives them huge survivability can actually flip this and it's very possible and therefore you want to take that precaution of creating you know enough space in between you the payload and your team so you can stay alive you can be irritating they have to devote resources to get you and if they don't then you deal a lot of damage this out a lot of stuff get transcendence which in your in yourself can you know keep your entire team alive the winston gets on the point uh, he dies immediately and this is your team winning so that is really, you know, the biggest problem with this play. It is in general that, you know, your Senyata play, your positioning is very much of the, you know, oh, I'm just gonna stay here, you know, being very risky, being very close 
to your team all the time create space make them make you make them work for the kill right be be you know think of like you're a little bit you know of a you know a, a, a really cute girl or for a guy for that matter i suppose uh, and you know you you know the dps's the divers of the enemy team they're just like you know singles that really want to to you know to get to know you and you're like you know you gotta work for it if you want it you gotta work for it right so make them commit with their dashes, their recalls, their leaps, their bubbles, their defense matrix, whatever they have to make them ruin their positioning to get to you. So that even if you die, their team is out of position, they are weak, they're easy to get to. Um, or that you have, you know, the, the time that you can keep, you know, distance, maybe you're not as, you know, of a, uh, you know, okay, let's go for this guy, you have higher chance of outdueling traces because they have very few blinks left, etc. You get also a heads up that something is coming a big heads up and a time for you to shoot especially when the winston like this does not run with a diva when he leaps huge distances he doesn't have anything to peel him he, he can't use his bubble midair right if he does it will drop somewhere that it doesn't matter so you while he gets closer you can mark him you could shoot him you can land a lot of headshots and stuff like that um, besides that your aim isn't really the greatest it could be way better um as I said, you know, you're not very used, I expect, to to that style of aiming, since Sen is one of the hardest projectile heroes in the game. But still, that's something that is still something that you should work on if you want to have a viable Senyata in the future, because this is not a very good Senyata aim. Besides that, guys, I hope that you like this coaching series. If you didn't like, if you didn't like, don't. And in general, drop down your thoughts of this VOD, the coaching series, everything like that down in the description. And by description, I'm in the comment section. Okay, I'm a little bit tired here. Um, I hope that uh, you guys have a lovely, lovely gaming experience. As always, guys, stay positive. Give the enemy in your crosshair.